views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to the hit show, Questionable Conversations Radio, with Dr. Glenna Rice on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you a busy parent? Are you deeply invested in your personal health and success? Questionable Conversations Radio is a space that explores different parenting methods, examines healthier lifestyles, and explores what else is possible to guide you toward a successful career. Is your fast-paced lifestyle draining all of your energy? Join Dr. Glenna as she shares her motherly wisdom, offers her expertise in body transformation, and gives insights on her personal experience as a successful businesswoman. The answers are in front of you. All you need are the right questions. Now, here's your host. Hi, welcome everyone to Questionable Conversations Radio on Transformational Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Glenna Rice, and I am here today with an amazing guest, for an amazing conversation that I'm so excited to have with her. I have Lauren Marie here, who I've known for years, a fabulous woman, <laughs> mother. And we're here, we're going to be talking about um, being in business and being a mom and how you can have it all and how you can do that. And Lauren is a mother of twins. Um, and she is a access conscious facilitator, as am I, and a joy business facilitator. And runs so many different things and projects with the company Access Consciousness. Um, and I know, you know, I, it's amazing because I remember her calling me up and saying, oh, my gosh, Glenna, I'm pregnant <laughs> at the time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and looking at you now, Lauren, I am so, like, in awe and impressed and welcome. Thank well, you. Yeah. I just have to say that this this show, Questionable Conversations, was partially an inspiration for you because you were. I started a radio, um, a monthly telecall with the same name, and the show had first been question, the Questionable Parent, and it's changed to Questionable Conversations. And you were part of the inspiration, and the creation of that. So Lauren did work with me. That's the day. I love it. Day. I love yeah. those calls too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and. It was wonderful working with you. She was um, amazing, an amazing creator of possibilities. Um, that's one of the things she does outstandingly is having ideas that actually you can institute and create. And she did that with me and then had babies and got busier. And, <laughs> and, busier. <laughs> and everything so stopped. I just gave it all up and became a parent. Oh, wait, <laughs> no. She got busier. She got more jobs, offers, and things going on. And you were so incredibly amazing when you got busier and making sure that I had to come and take over what you'd been doing and it wasn't like you just stopped working it was a really wonderful process um which i'm always been grateful for so we got kids and we do business right and we do it a little different huh (laughs) i hope so (laughs) we're a little different um so we're going to talk about some tools we're kind of thinking maybe three but it'll probably be more than that so one of the things um is you get busier with kids and how does being busy or being a mom actually contribute to your business? Is there anything you can say about that? For me, I just knew I had to step the F up when I had <laughs> twins. <laughs> um, and even when I got pregnant, it was like, ah, and then I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I've got to, I've got to really step up my game. Like I'm going to be really busy. I'm going to need a lot more money. I've got to like, you know, just step up. And I, and I knew that I had to do that. And also to have the lifestyle that I, I was choosing. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to stop anything. I didn't want to give up anything. Um, I love my jobs. I have lots of them. I love creating. I love working. And I also knew that two babies is going to you know be a bit uh, full on. I didn't know how full on until I had them six weeks early (laughs) and, um, you know, in the hospital with premature infants and everything and still desiring to create, which was like bizarre because you're sleep deprived and you, you know, are delirious. And, but for me, it was like, I didn't ever even right after I had them, I didn't want to stop creating, um, with my work or anything else. So I knew that I had to change things and I knew I had to choose more. 
Um, but I didn't want to go to this place of, well, I've got to sacrifice now. And, I, you know, no more cappuccinos in the morning because you got to, like, save your pennies for <laughs> diapers or whatever. It was like, that's not my reality. So I um, knew I just had to choose more. Yeah. Yeah. The way we, we think we have to give up our lives. So, you know, I do the conscious parents, conscious kids also. Um, is I facilitate those classes. And a lot of what you're talking about is one of the things we speak about, about being that makes you a great parent is not giving your life up for your children. And that's exactly what you're talking about. I mean, I remember when I was pregnant many years ago, 24 years ago with my son, no access tools then, but having that point of view, it's like, I wasn't going to give, going to give up my life. I was going to bring him places and still be me and enjoy things. Um, I was a little surprised as you probably were <laughs> that, um, they are a big part of, they become a big part of creating your life. And it yeah. is absolutely possible to not give your life up for them, not sacrifice your life. And they become an add to your life, which is not how most people look about, look at parenting, at least in this reality. It's supposed to be a big sacrifice and you're actually proud of it. If you, you know, go to the schoolyard, which you're starting to possibly do. And parents yeah. talk about it. <laughs> all the terrible things that are happening every day with their kids and what they can't do and what they had to give up. And you were really choosing something totally different. And um, I don't know if you can speak to that. Like how, how have you, what have you done? What have you put into place? What have you demanded, I guess, to make sure that you continue to create for you? And I, you say, I mean, really going to question with every choice regarding, I mean, big things like the big sort of for me, when I started traveling, um, away from the kids overseas. I live in Australia. So a lot of the work that we do is in Europe and in the States. So it's not a short trip. Um, and, <laughs> and, um, and really not, ha not buying into anyone else's point of view. Like this is a problem or this is bad for, for my family or my kids really looking at, um, when I, when I made the choice to start traveling again, um, <laughs> the Australian birds. <laughs> um, what is this going to create for all of us? If I choose to go on this trip, will it create more for my whole family, including my kids, more for me, including me, you know, um, or not? And looking at every, every choice for my business, you know, if I, if I take on this project or this, uh, whatever, like what's it going to create for all of us, but including me in it, um, and not having any like, preconceived decisions about this will be good for them or this won't be good for them because it's always changing is the other thing. Yeah, no, that's going to happen. So when you, when you ask those questions for those listeners who aren't that familiar with um, access tools and how we play differently on the planet with them is, you know, can you kind of talk about that? Like is it's going to contribute? Like what, what is that for you? What awareness do you get and what, when it doesn't and what do you choose then? Well, anytime you ask a question, it, you get a sense of the energy of what that's going to create. And for me, it's like an expansive lightness if it's a yes. And if it's not, it just doesn't feel right. Like it goes, mm. even if it seems like a good idea and you can reason it, you know, logic it. Um, yesterday, we, my husband and I went down the street to the beach and we were like, he's like, you know, maybe we shouldn't go to um, this seven day event in Langkawi this year because we want to buy a house and, you know, we want to save and there's taxes and blah, 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 like all, you know, logical reasons to not That's spend, yeah. yeah, this amount of money because it's an expensive class. There's four of us. We've got four plane tickets, like, and it's, you know, it's a chunk. And he goes, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this. And I was like, okay, well, he's like, what do you get? And I was like, okay, well, if we go, what's that going to create? If we don't go, what's that going to create? And and I didn't really have a point of view. We have to or we can't. It was just really looking at it like, okay, we could choose not to go. And I'm like, Ugh, it just makes me like, mm, you know, the idea of us not going, even though, yes, it would be a good idea to save money with what we want to choose. Um, it just doesn't feel right, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 And you're, what do you, are you going? Are you going? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was never not going, but he was like, oh, maybe we shouldn't. And we ha entertained it for like three seconds, not going. <laughs> you know, that's, that's such a great story. I was doing a class on money just last night and very similar story. I had really early in access um, about a seven day and bringing all three of my kids with me. And some people may have heard this. I, I, it just, it changed my whole 
the way I look at when you ask a question, what's it going to create for your future? And then choosing those, the, what is lighter? Like, that's just what you're talking about. It was like, I looked at bringing my oldest, who was a t just starting to be a teenager. He'd be easier. I could maybe, maybe pull off that kind of money. And then I said, okay, two, it got a little lighter. And when I said, what if I bring all three of my kids, like the whole family and the world just like exploded. Lightness was, I'd never felt anything like that ever before. And then it was like, ah, I couldn't, I could never, like, that was my next point of view. And then I just said, okay, what is it going to take? No matter what it takes, we're all going to Costa Rica. And I'll tell you that things started, you never know the how, right, Lauren? You never know how it's going to show up. But the universe started arranging these things. I got back child support money I hadn't received. We got first class tickets for the price of coach. It was the craziest trip. And all the kids came with me. And this was like probably 13 years ago um, to Costa Rica. And the lightness, I, when I was there, I saw what I was seeing. Like the parenting classes I've taught for years started, came, came out of that class. So when you choose, like you're talking about, from that place of what is going to create more, what's this going to create, what will our futures be like, and you include you in it, which moms, please include you in that. Um, it's amazing what shows up. And it does and certainly... It doesn't have to be an, an either or. Like it, for yeah. when, when my husband's like, well, we want to buy a house. So it's like, well, either we create money for that or we go to this. I was like, well, what if going would actually help us create more money? Um, and it's not linear. It doesn't make sense logically, but energetically, I know that it, it does. Yeah, that is so different. That's such a different yes. way to look at things. I can buy this or I can buy that. <laughs> what if you can have all of it? What if you can have both the trip and the house? And to even, to even look at like, what if going to Longkawi and spending all this money on this amazing seven-day event created more money in your life exactly. and then you know we'll go to a break here pretty soon but um i'd like to talk after we come back about asking your children to be the contribution it's one of the questions i've used and i know you've used it like what contribution can i be and receive from my children i've never imagined and how that shows up in ways you don't imagine like that trip i was talking about when i went to the um event seven day with my children i knew it was going to create more and there was a contribution that they were to my future that I had never seen then. Um, and do you, you ask that with your kids? Oh yeah. From day one, even, well, actually when they were in utero before pre pre day one, <laughs> I always ask them to contribute. <laughs> yeah. And it's not contributing like they're going to do the dishes. Your kids are too little to do that yet. And so they're actually, they may not be, <laughs> I haven't seen them. They anything. try. It's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. We're going to go to break now, and we'll continue this conversation when we get back. It's Dr. Glenna Rice with my beautiful guest, Lauren Marie. Tune in to the Astral Insider, your portal for adventure, insight, and growth with Fernando Albert. And get ready to tour the astral realm, expand your life in ways you've never imagined, and call in for the journey of your life with this world-renowned lucid dreamer, astral projectionist, psychic medium, and healer, Fernando Albert. This is every second and fourth Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. What is a brilliant culture, and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Hi. I'm Jane Matanga with Grow Your Soul Radio. It's been said that whatever you believe, you are. When you take charge with your positive thoughts and beliefs, you are the creator of your perceptions. You have the power to shift your reality. When you begin to shift your beliefs, the universe will dream a bigger dream for you than you ever imagined. 
believe in your dreams, and every part of your world can open up in new and glorious ways because everything is possible. I'd love for you to join me on Grow Your Soul Radio with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Talk Radio. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Are you feeling stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self-esteem? Do you crave a healthy relationship filled with inspiration? You might just be on the verge, on the verge of attracting your soulmate. Tune in each month to The Laura Richer Show, where dating coach Laura Richer shares tools for using your dating breakdown for a relationship breakthrough. For more information, visit richerhealinghypnosis.com. Hi, it's Dr. Glenna Rice, questionable conversations on, um, on parenting bodies and business with my wonderful guest, Lauren Marie. And we were just talking about asking a kind of weird question, what contribution can our children be to our lives, our future, the reality, which I don't think a lot of parents even consider that their children, especially when they're as little as Lauren's. How old are your kids, Lauren? They're three? They're three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Because we usually consider that we are, our job is to contribute to them. Yeah. We provide everything and we provide the money and all the other stuff. But asking them to be a contribution shows up in ways you can't imagine. And I don't know if there's some, if you have any things to share. I know you said you, were t- you asked it since they were in utero. Well, when I was, so I am American and I, you know, uh, moved to Australia, but there was a period where, you know, we were doing visas and blah, blah, blah. And I was pregnant. So, and we had to get married and all this stuff. So it was like this period where I had to leave Australia to like do a visa break and then come back into the country and it wasn't like super legal at the moment it was like in process (laughs) so um and I'm pregnant with twins but I wasn't really showing yet so I wasn't obviously going to tell them like yeah I'm planning on you know coming into your country and giving birth to my children and staying (laughs) so um (laughs) that's something you're supposed to say so um but I'm like coming back into the country and I don't have a plane ticket to leave again because obviously I'm not planning on leaving. Um, and they they stopped me at immigration and they confiscated all my stuff. And they, I mean, talk about scared because I'm like, I'm going to get deported, which means I'm not going to be able to get back into the country, which means like, what the hell am I going to do? Like my, you know, I, my plan was to um, be with my husband who is Australian and have children here. So I'm sitting in this thing, like, and they took my, you know, all my stuff. And I was like, holy crap, like, ah, (laughs) so I just said, hey, hey, guys, like, to my, to, you know, whatever they, embryos, fetus, whatever they called, (laughs) you know, (laughs) Um, (laughs) do you guys want to be born in Australia? Do you want to live here? Uh, If so, you got to help a girl out, you know, like, help, and I just said that to them, and the lady that had all my things just stood up and walked over and handed me my, my laptop and phone and said, go on in, like no explanation, just, okay, you can go. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> you know, like oh, that worked. <laughs> oh my, the potent babies you had. <laughs> they were like, we want to get in. <laughs> yeah. And what asking the kids contribute created more for your life. This is what happens if you ask them to contribute. And it's not, it's not like I say, it's not like they do the dishes or clean up their rooms because some kids just will never pull those tasks off very well, um, which I found with two of mine. I've got three and one of them keeps everything clean and the other two never did. And they, they've now moved off to college and have their own places and they actually keep their college rooms very clean. So <laughs> that was not the contribution. So I was getting. But things like um, if your kids like money, you know, if they enjoy money and you're the one that provides most of their money um, and my kids did create money also, then 
weirdly enough, my money increased when I started asking my kids what contribution can I be and receive from them I've never imagined. And this, the, the money I started creating started to increase. And, you know, it was also what you spoke about where I was making a demand that I, I was a single mom at the time and I was not going to be one of those broke ass single moms. Um, which everyone, I I think I read a couple articles and was just horrified of the statistics that happens and that that wasn't going to be my reality and asking my kids to contribute. They didn't want that reality any more than I did. And mm. things started to get greater. My business started to grow and grow and grow um, from that question. I also asked the kids to bring in people who they want in, to, in their lives. Like when they were probably six months old, um, and we, it was just me and their dad and, and, uh, you know, we're like, okay, we could really use some help. Um, especially I was also working and breastfeeding two infants. So it was like, okay, I could at least like have someone come so I could take a nap or something. Um, right. Right. <laughs> and, um, uh, so I asked this quite, I asked the kids, they're six months old, so they didn't, you know, answer me like, but I said, Hey, like, who would you like to come and like be with you and play with you? And this person popped in my mind, just, oh, maybe I asked her and she had a teenage daughter. And I said, Hey, you know, do you, you know, is there any chance your daughter would be into babysitting? And she's like, that's so weird. She just asked me yesterday about your kids. And so it was like, there's magic happening. So I said, Oh, well, would, would she be interested in coming and babysitting? So she came and she was our babysitter for maybe two years. Like, and because she was so young, it was like really affordable. And it was not something I thought I could have. Like uh, childcare in Australia is exorbitant. Like it's, you know, you, I don't even know why you would work because you just spend as much watching, getting someone to watch your kids. Yeah. But because she was, she was like 13 and I was still at home. So it wasn't a big deal to have like a 13 year old. And um, it just worked, but I couldn't have really predicted how that would happen. So just asking the question and asking the kids, Hey, bring in who you want. And she showed up the next day. It was like, Whoa. <laughs> wow. This is another conscious parent, like empowering your kids to know that they know and listening to what they know. And many stories like that. I, I had to say, you know, who can, you know, asking for help is often really difficult because we think we're supposed to do everything as a mom. That's kind of how it's thrown out there at us. Um, and and it's expensive. The daycares are made totally expensive. And I've asked, I asked a similar question. Um, I think my youngest was about two or two years old. Um, and I was starting to travel more and it was like, who could help me? And as the kids, who would you like? Who could you pull in? Just a similar question. And my parents, <laughs> my parents ended up selling their home and taking the money and buying a trailer, um, RV, being around in their retirement. And they're like, whenever you're gone, we'll come by. I was like, I love whoa. That. <laughs> what <are> you? <laughs> and they did. Like, I travel all the time. And when we talked about that, like, yeah, are the kids okay with it? Um, but yeah, and they were here and they've helped out and they've helped. My mom has helped raise the kids and they adore her. And it's been a huge gift and a huge help um, for all of us. And they were a huge part of that choice. There was also daycare ones that I asked about too. Like, I asked, um, what daycare my daughter wanted to be in when she was three. And she ran through this park, dead run. And she's very fast <laughs> chasing after. Her, and she goes right up to the door of this daycare. And I'm pulling her away. And <laughs> I look up and I went, oh, should we go inside? And they funnily enough had an opening for a, her age. And it was like a waitlist daycare. Yeah. And, we went in, and it was two blocks from her brother's uh, middle school. Wow. Yeah. I do. My kids did the same thing. They, they went to the, yeah, they're in a preschool and they, they picked it too. And they went there and they were like, here, here, here. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. They know. <laughs> well, all these things we're talking about um, make parenting actually more ease, easier when you actually allow your kids to contribute to it. Um, and so, ha so with your business, you know, you're a mom at home doing business work all the time. You're on computers. I've seen fabulous videos of your daughter or on YouTube photos or something. She <laughs> loves working. 
<laughs> she has a little toy laptop for her work means you go upstairs, which is where I am, um, and you get your laptop and that's work. So, cause <laughs> you know, their dad, um, watches them while I work. And, um, so that's to her, she's like, okay, work, that's what it is. So she gets her little laptop and she goes, I'm going to go work. And she goes upstairs and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> she loves working. <laughs> yeah. And that is just amazing. And one of the things, um, not giving your life up for your kids creates for them is the awareness that they don't have to give their life up in the future. If they were to create relationships and families that they can, can continue to have, um, an amazing life and have everything like I'm saying, having it all and having an ease. I'm not saying easy, different energy, but having an ease with having everything you desire and what action steps or what you have to create to have that. And it's, um, you want to say a great role model, but it's really an energy you be that shows her a possibility of energy and your son, a possibility of energy that they can have as their future. Um, I know that whole giving your life up to your kids thing. If someone had said that to me when I was a kid, do you want, you know, your mom to give her life up for you, I would have been kind of aghast. Of course I don't. I love my mom. I don't want her life to be gone because of me. I mean, the energy of that whole thing is so much heaviness for the kids as well as us. So I really I love... I just wanted my parents to be happy. Like, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't see... Yeah. I mean, of course, as a kid, you don't really get what your parents are. It's all about you. But I just wanted them to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I do too. Hey, we got that cool thing going on with Access Consciousness. There's a whole get your happy on. Get your happy on. Get your happy on. <laughs> Hashtag get your happy on. So those of you who are out there listening going, oh, I'd like to be a little more happy. You can go to the accessconscious.com website and there's a whole bunch of workshops and classes and stuff going on and videos that they're putting out this month because ha World Happiness Day is coming up in five days, actually on the 20th. And we have a whole campaign because yeah, what if parents were happy? Shocker. It's possible. Yeah. Is it possible? Um, <laughs> so if people wanted to reach you, Lauren, how would they do that? Uh, my website, meetlaurenmarie.com, probably the easiest way. Cool. Do you have any cool classes, set up stuff coming up, or besides Lang Cowie, which you will be at? Yeah. Um, I'm doing some classes in um, Europe and bizarre places, Hungary, Paris. Um, I'm in Melbourne next week. Hey, you know, I'm always doing stuff online too. And I love doing business and money classes for moms, like, because I really believe that creating as a mom is, is not even like just po possible, but it's really like required. I mean, how many moms could acknowledge that they are creators and that they don't have to give up what they're creating when they have kids that could actually create more. Oh. Exactly. I mean, it's such a disservice to everybody in your family when you give up yourself for your kids and not that if you are that energy of creating more. So people want to find out more. And there's also the accessconsciousness.com um, facilitator site that you could find Lauren Marie at. Do you have a hashtag Lauren Marie or accessconsciousness.com? Uh, forward slash Lauren Marie. Yeah. Accessconsciousness.com. Yeah. And you can find her classes and workshops there if you're mom and want to know more about what this amazing mom's creating. Uh, Glenna Rice dot or accessconsciousness.com slash dr glenna rice for the access site and i have my new website up it's live awesome. it's still a little in the works but it's there so you can go there now to um see what i got it going on i'm kind of happy with it excited for that and i think we're about ready to go to another break so i um it's glenna dr glenna rice on questionable conversations parenting's parenting bodies and business on Transformational Talk Radio with my guest, Lauren Marie. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit the fearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Have you ever wondered if there's a way to heal the deep, hidden inner issues, wounds, beliefs, and traumas? 
The journey into spiritual healing engages people in all areas of their lives to heal themselves and others. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Dr. Jaffe brings conversations of healing of body, mind, and spirit as he merges the excellence of traditional medicine with the beauty of spiritual healing. For more information about Dr. Jaffe, this show, and his work, visit drjaffemd.com. It's time to get your life back on Burn Bright Today with Jennifer Marcinelli. Tune in each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Learn to move from the darkness of burning out to the light of burning bright. Jennifer is redefining stress and the energetic causes of burnout, shining a light on process to get your life back. For more information about Jennifer and her work, visit BurnBrightToday.com. Interested in deepening your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit www.esotericstudies.net. Want the knowledge and wisdom to understand where spirituality, science, and psychology intersect? Then join the Karmic Path Radio Show with Tina and Laura on TransformationTalkRadio.com Thursdays at 4 p.m. Pacific. Follow this charmingly, disarmingly dynamic duo as they explore how psychic ability, spirituality, and karmic law tie together. For more information on Tina, Laura, and their groundbreaking work, visit TheKarmicPath.com. Hello, everyone. It's Dr. Glenn Rice here, Questionable Conversations, and I'm here with my guest, Lauren Marie, mother of twins, amazing businesswoman, and we're talking about being a mompreneur, um, having babies, having it all, creating your business that works for you, and a joy of business. Having, having teenagers, which I think has got to be <laughs> the next worst thing to having two babies, is having three teenagers. Yeah, I mean, actually, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's awesome. <laughs> Well, the access tools have been amazing because they kind of, um, when teenage world hits, it's quite a shocker. You know, when mm-hmm. kids are babies, young kids, they tend to want a lot of your energy and they're pulling all this time and you flow and you do stuff for it. And then all of a sudden these teenage years hit and it's like, ah, they don't want anything to do with you. And you have to like, mm-hmm. the whole energy starts changing and they roll your eyes and they don't like you. And that's the first thing you got to like uncreate, destroy and be okay with. It's like, they're still there. They're just doing teenager and their job is to so drive. How do, you, how do you deal with that? Because that I hear like everyone I know when the kids hit teenage years, this happens and, and I'm not looking forward to that. So how do you how do you handle when your kids just start like rebelling and going against you and telling you they hate you and <laughs> all of those things? You're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, my God, mommy, yeah. I have no idea. Um, yeah. <laughs> you don't know how to do Instagram. It's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I got more followers than you. <laughs> but you're a cool mom. My mom was definitely not cool, and I didn't think she knew anything when I became a teenager. <laughs> um, well, one of the things Gary Douglas, the founder of Access, said before my kids were teenagers, before it really hit, I had this because the teenager's job is to drive you crazy. And then he added it later. It's like, so you die off soon and then get your money. <laughs> that was like, that was like that's terrible. Um, but I asked my son when he did like this eye rolling, horrible teenage moment. Um, so I, I said to him, this was, I said, wow, you're really doing a great job being a teenager. You're really doing a great job driving me crazy. And he started to smile, this little grin and turned his face away. And I was like, whoa, it's true. It's actually true. And then he stopped being a teenager for like two days. So one of the things was acknowledging their teenagerness, whatever that is, and not resisting and reacting as much as you want to. I also would say um, I would roll my eyes back and say they didn't really know how to do it very well. I was a way better teenager. Than them. Oh. And they would laugh. Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> well, one thing that I've always been um, impressed with you is that you're – your kids actually still want to have a relationship with you even through the teenage years. And now two of them have left home and it, it seems like they, I mean, I saw your middle, your middle child recently at a access class in Dublin 
and um and she's like su- such a cool young adult and creating her life in another country and I'm just like wow how do you like how did you what did you choose that allowed um them to stay c- close to you that way that's a great question I mean we've had our moments she's probably yeah. been as independent and rebellious from uh-huh. me of the three of them um I you know, it's all these tools, really. It's like having allowance for them, asking questions, not resisting and reacting when they're being dicks, you know, (laughs) when they're being difficult and always empowering them really to know what they know and allowing them to choose what works for them. And when they choose stuff that was crazy, to ask them questions about it, not being that overbearing mother that would say, no, you can't go out with your friends. Remember one time, Saoirse, the middle one, we're talking about was going to go out to a party with friends in the evening. They were picking her up and I'm sure that, you know, we, Hey, we partied, you know, <laughs> Lauren and I had fabulous lives before kids and after. Um, oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> We've had lots of fun and many, many access classes. Um, and, but it just felt really horrible. There was an energy of, Ugh. and I was like, okay, how do I go to my teenager and say, I can't say to her, you could never have said to her, you can't go. You're not going to this party. She would have went anyway, just like I would have as a teenager. So fighting her was never an option. It was out manipulating her and then giving her choice and empowering her to know what those choices created. And I I remember walking into a room and I just said, hey, you know, there's something weird about tonight. What what, what is going on? I mean, I just have this weird kind of energy. I don't know if I even use the word energy. And she goes, yeah, yeah, mom, I know. It is funny. I just told my friends I'm not going. Wow. <sighs> yeah, but she mm-hmm. was empowered to know. It wasn't me telling her it was a bad situation. So, you know, that, and we, we both do, you know, know this. Empowering your kids to know is looking at what they're, showing them what their choices create. And that's one of the things I always did from little on, and I still do it. If you choose that, what's it going to create? And is that going to work for you? And then they get to choose. They can choose something that doesn't work for them. I did it, you know, and they can choose what works for them. And we can ask questions then. So when she went to Dublin, it was like, wow, she's moving to Dublin. Is that going to, you know, what's that going to create for your future? And just like that, we talked about going to Lankawi, going to seven days. It had that energy. And then I'm like, hmm, okay. How could I create, how can I contribute to that? How can I support her in what she's choosing? Because I could feel how it was going to create her future. And as, um, so are there times that you've stopped them from making choices that like, you really I have can't. just, yeah. <laughs> My kids are too powerful. They're too potent. I could never have stopped them. I could have argued with them, um, and fought them and they can outfight me too. I mean, fights with teenagers, just like toddlers or any age, isn't really a thing that creates. So did I ever stop them? No, I don't think I ever did stop them from anything they wanted to create. I really encourage them. If they love things, like, and you're probably seeing that in your kids. This is a really cool question because um, the things your kids do all the time and they enjoy are the things they love and they will create their future. And we often, as parents, mm. will stop them from that. Like my son with video games. I was going to say, your son was, I remember he was in his room a lot on the computer and now he's, he's using that for work, isn't he? Like. Yeah, he's just about to graduate with a computer science degree and his, wants to work in artificial intelligence. And his wow. his ability to commune with a computer is beyond anything I can imagine. And his brain, like, his being, how he works with that is incredible. And he was creating that when he was a seven-year-old playing Nintendo games. I know wow. he was. And, you know, I was the the push to stop kids playing these games was huge. And he said how much he loved doing them at one point. I was like, oh. And I've heard, you know, we hear in access about things you enjoy or things usually people don't want you to have this happy, get your happy on. is not something that's real in this world we live in. It's mostly work hard and he's getting his happy on playing the games. And he told me, and I was like, I'm not going to be the person that stops him. I'm not well, there's him. such a, as a parent, it's like you're, in, you're, hello, birdies. Um, like as soon as you become a parent, everyone feels the need to tell you what's right for your kids and what's wrong. And like, there's so much impelled, like, I mean, and now that they're in school too, it's like sugar is bad. 
you know, iPads are bad. Um, you know, like there's all these bad things that they, you know, aren't supposed to do now. And it's just really interesting because I'm going, wow, I really have to look at for my kids. And in the moment, is this good or bad? Or is it, you know, what's it going to create? Not just, okay, I'm never going to give them an iPad. I'm never going to feed them sugar. What if that's not what's going to actually create ease for them or for me? So practically, how do you, I mean, just the, the moms out there, they're like, what? You give your kids sugar and let them play on iPads? You are the worst mom ever. I mean, wait, I how do you, I am. in the moment? <laughs> I'm actually a bad mom and I would, I would still be doing that. But when I went on my last trip, I just got back a couple of days ago um, while I was gone for two weeks, um, their dad, who's, you know, at home with them uh, while I'm gone, chose to send the iPads to the doctor um, <laughs> and they haven't come back. And that was actually because he started seeing like weird stuff that was happening on YouTube and kids watching like super sketchy, I mean, um, things. And we would, you know, we would like look at what they're watching and go, oh my God, like, what is that? Why are, like, how does this get on a children's, you know, YouTube channel? And we started getting like a little, you know, sketched out by it. So, and also he just wanted to see like, if we take that, cause they get a bit like, addicted and they just want to do that all the time so they wake up and they're like i bet i bet I've, and we're like okay he needs to like go out and go for a swim or you know something else so yeah. he took them away and like i was like i don't know how you did this without me being here for two weeks and no ipads i would not have lasted one day but um they haven't come back from the doctor yet and they started um like playing together more and being more like, um, I don't know, interactive with like creating forts and doing different things that they wouldn't have done when they're on their iPad all, all day. Mm. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'll never give them an iPad, especially if you're on a plane or something like Jesus. There's times when <laughs> it's like, that is a really good thing to have. Um, and the same with like what they eat. I mean, at their school, they're always like, you know, if you give, cause my son will just eat sugar all day. Like he, if there's sugar of any sort, that's what he'll eat over anything else. So they're like, you can't put sugar in his lunch because then he only eats that. I'm like, okay, well then he's just not going to eat. And they're like, no, no, put it in another thing. We'll give it to him in the afternoon after he eats his lunch. I'm like, okay, good luck with that. But I mean, I had to sort of also look at like their rules or whatever. And I try, I was like, okay, we'll give it a shot. Like put the, you know, everything that was sugary, even if it was like fruit sugar, they were like, you know, so they have their point of view. I'm like, well, that's fine. So now he just basically doesn't eat. Um, <clears throat> and I'm like, okay, you know, and then they give him the snack in the afternoon and he's like, Argh. I'm like, well, whatever. I mean, he gets home and he just eats, you know, a big meal when he gets home. But I had to look at, okay, like practically and pragmatically, what's going to work for them at home and at school. And if we're like in the car or, you know, traveling or at their, you know, grandparents house or whatever, like it's, it's sort of a in the moment choice and it has to change. Oh, I love that. It's like about, we don't have to be consistent as a parent. No. We have to be consistent and you don't have to be consistent with your husband's point of view about the kids either. I mean, a lot of right. parents may be all on the same page and it makes you crazy and the kids crazy and it's like yeah you can your kids have the brilliance to have the awareness of how they act in this place and how they act in that place and what they get to eat here and what they get to eat there and you're showing them how to play in the world in all sorts of sandboxes and all sorts of ways to get it to work for them i love that that's yeah. really cool so cool we're going to break again and it's dr glenn rice at questionable conversations on transformational talk radio we'll be right back ready to branch out? Take a leap of faith. Then tune in to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills on TransformationTalkRadio.com every second and fourth Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific to equip, empower, and enlighten yourself. Erica will energize and excite you to power up your passionate dream that sets your soul on fire. So get fearlessly ready and get powerfully rooted in your yes to live it up, love it up, and let it go to ignite the life you deserve. Visit GetRootedRadio.com and tune in. Stuck in a roundabout of dysfunction? Learn how to speak your truth to power with host Dr. Kathy Obear. Create real change with smart tools and smart strategies. No frills, no fluff, just life-changing conversations to help get you where you want to be. Extend your reach and become an agent for real change with Kathy Obear. 
For more information on Kathy and her work, please visit drkathyobear.com. That's drkathyobear.com. Did you know that when working with the law of attraction, it's beneficial to share your longings with a supportive tribe who can assist in maintaining accountability and hold the creative space for your desires to manifest? I'm Autumn Seibel, host of Golden Otter Radio, where the metaphysical meets the mainstream. Join me each month at the new and full moon to plant your seeds of abundance, consciously tend to your intentions throughout the lunar phases, then harvest the fruits of your co-creation with the universe in my Lunar Manifestations Members Only Forum. Your tribe is waiting for you at goldenotter.us. Are you ready to broadcast your brand ideal with the latest in information technology? Bioresonant software distills your brand ideal or intention and enhances your core internal organizing principle. This has a tremendous impact on your organization's alignment as well as the behavior, satisfaction, and the retention of its employees. Your physical business structure can unfurl, opening up the possibilities of creating an energetic presence for a brand even ahead of its launch. Check out JeanetteWolf.com for more on a signature frequency branding. Welcome back, everyone. This is Dr. Glenn Rice on questionable conversations about bodies and business and parenting. And this is a parenting show. It's been a great one. I'm here with um, Lauren Marie, fabulous friend, mother, entrepreneur, mother of twins. And we've been, it's been an amazing conversation so far. Um, and just for the listeners to find Lauren Marie, it's meetlaurenmarie.com. Yep. And accessconscious.com slash Lauren Marie to find her access classes that are coming up in the future. And for me, drglennarice.com, my new website, and accessconscious.com slash drglennarice. And also joy, Access Joy Business. We're both um, Joy Business facilitators, and you can find the classes we have coming up. I have a um, masterclass business done different coming up here in San Francisco, my hometown, in a couple weeks. I don't know, Lauren, if you have any business stuff coming up. I'm doing the same class, but in Hungary, but it'll also be online, and that's um, in uh, May. Yeah. May. So. <laughs> you have to search for sites. Sometimes. Your dates. We don't have them. Up. <laughs> terrible. It's a terrible. Um, well, business and moms. This was a stuff about business. I don't. One of the things that I've. Um, noticed is that mothers had these abilities to multitask and we've been talking about a lot of those you with twins and that ability can be such a gift being someone who runs a business to being a mompreneur because you already have this ability to have a whole bunch of things in your awareness all the time and keep those things in your awareness and know when something's required and when something's not required i know with my kids it was always i would ask one of the tools i would give parents was what's what's required your kids require anything of you and having that with your business, it just goes, it, it can be such a contribution. Um, often mothers don't realize the gifts being a parent actually gives you to being an entrepreneur and creating a business or with whatever your business is your life, with the jobs you have too. I don't know if you've noticed that. I know it's really different going from a life with kids, without kids, to a life with kids. Yeah, and I and I so agree that the skills that you develop as a as a mom or a, or a dad um, they so apply to business. If you if you come out of the point of view that you need to uh, learn how to do business or how to run a business, it, like from this reality, you have to go to you know school and learn things. It's like, but actually, your um, everyday life with your kids, the way that you have to. Like, let's say they go to school, but you're still aware of them and you don't check out, you know, energetically, you're still sort of tapped in. You always know, like, if something's off or if they require you or if maybe that day they should stay home or uh, one of them says that they're fine, but you kind of know they're not fine. Like all of that um, awareness of, of energy, it so applies to business, uh, whatever your business is. And definitely multitasking. I mean... With twins, you sort of like are that you have to multitask because there's two, <laughs> but um, and you have no hands. People think like, oh, just an extra baby, but it's like, no, you have only two hands. So now you have to like learn how to like juggle, and you know, you should have seen the contraptions I had set up for like breastfeeding, and they're like still on my laptop, and it was really crazy. But um, oh my gosh, with two, did you do? Did you? 
I did. I nursed. Yeah. I did my. I, I totally did. Yeah, yeah. cause yeah, you get you can put the baby on like you said, put them on your tit and do anything. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Had, it's a bit with two. I had to do the pumping, and then like I'd have one, and then I'd have a pump. But then, yeah, it's. You know, they look really creative with props and things. Um, but I used to love to put the kids in the stroller and um, uh, go for a walk. So I'm, you know, getting my exercise. The kids usually fall asleep when they were young. And I'm outside, so I get some fresh air, I get some exercise. And then I'd um, make, a, make a business call or get on a conference call or listen to a class or do something like work-related, you know, while I'm while I'm walking. So multitasking, it was like, I, I had to, in order to get anything done when the kids were little, especially. Uh, but I just learned to put things together that I could. And, you know, um, yeah, just. When you don't have a point of view, it's not going to work. It's amazing how it will work out. Yeah. My kids would be doing homework. I'd kind of be making their dinner and I'd be transcribing stuff in between and all. Yeah. And you're aware of everything. That's going and on. I think being willing to follow follow the energy, like not having, okay, I've got to get this done. Like sometimes you do, but as much as possible being flexible about, uh, you know, okay, if I really have a, like, I need to get this done, but my kid is screaming. It's like, okay, what's going to, what's going to create more easier. I can spend five minutes, you know, get them sorted, whatever, and then go back to it. It's going to allow everything to, to happen much more quickly and easier if I just, sort of like allow that flexibility. Yeah. Um, Being present with what's required and actually also making this demand that everything that, that you are creating that requires the institution at the moment, you're also going to be able to do that. I remember times when the kids would be sick from school and I had patients to see in my office and what do I do? You know, there was no one to watch them at the time. Um, and just looking at the kids and going, huh, you want to come with me to work today? And is that going to work? What's that going to create? Will you guys contribute to it? Can you be quiet, bringing them their iPads um, or whatever? It's usually Game Boys at the time. Um, and bringing them into the office and having every patient that came in that day being so happy to meet my kids, interacted with them, put them in another little I mean, it was never an issue, partially because it was like, this is going to work. And how is it going to work? And being able to follow the energy and also bringing them to classes. You know, yeah, I didn't and you didn't, and you didn't have the point of view. Had to hide what was going on. Like I see a lot of working wow. moms. They, you know, they try to pretend like they don't have kids, or they have to make a, you know, work call, and so they must shut their kids up and like, you know, be all professional. And it's like, what if you just allow them to contribute? And you'd be really honest and just say, "Hey, my kid's sick to them. I'm so sorry," you know. And and like you said, they're usually whoever you're working with uh, is so grateful, and they actually like being a part of your life in that way, um, and being sort of brought into your personal life or whatever. Well, it's like uh, when you don't have a point of view about it, that point of view doesn't show up. You know, yeah. I didn't have a point of view that I had to apologize that I was a mother and, yeah. and was a oh, owner. I didn't ever think I should apologize. This is what, you know, this is what's going on. This is here and I'm not sorry for it. I'm creating yeah. with it. And then no one ever had a problem because I didn't have a problem. So often when it's, it can be our point of view that creates our reality. So if you have a point of view, you want to hide your kids or you think there's something less or bad because you are a parent and you're in business, then that's the energy that you'll be putting out there that people will perceive. Yeah. I know you even said today, when I asked you to come on the show, you said, oh, at that time, the kids will be going up and they waking up and they might come in. I said, it's a parenting. It'd be perfect. Women in business, moms and moms. About half the, half the time you'll see them like pounding on the, you know, they'll wake up and they'll come upstairs and they're like, mommy. So we're like, we're, we're in luck. They didn't <laughs> make an appearance today, but it, um, I'm really grateful. Now I just try and let people know, Hey, this is a possibility. You know, I did a call last night and they got home from school halfway through and it was like, okay, there's like a lot of loud noise in the house now. Sorry, my kids just got home and everyone just laughed. And it's like, it wasn't a, wasn't a big deal. We would have loved to have seen them. I would have, because they're beautiful, adorable children and such a oh. conversation. So any last things to say? Any advice for moms, new moms, moms? Think, one last thing would be just start. Like if you don't have a business now and you're just just a mom or whatever, not just, but if you're not, um, or you want to change jobs or start something new, like just start wherever you're at and add to what you have going on. Like what additional revenue streams can you add 
no matter what your job or, or no job is, um, and no matter how, what age your kids are, or if they've left the house or if they're infants, it's like, what can you add to your life? Um, and especially with the revenue streams, you can always add revenue streams. Um, you don't have to quit your day job. You don't have to do something drastic, you know, just what can you add? Oh, I love that. That's one of my favorite questions. What, when I was overwhelmed and stressed out being a mom and with my, I would go, okay, what can I add to my life? Which is such a weird question to ask when you're stressed out. And it always created more space and created more ease. All right. Thank you so much. It's, um, Lauren, ask Lauren Marie. Meet Lauren Marie. Sorry. Meet Lauren Marie. <laughs> slash backslash Lauren Marie and I at glennarice.com to find me. Dr. Glennarice.com and accessconsciousness.com slash Dr. Glennarice to find all of our classes. Check out Get Your Happy On, hashtag Get Your Happy On to find out more about that great, um, everything we're doing with Access this month for World Happiness Day, which is on the 20th. And thank you so much, Lauren. I'm so happy you came on. Thank you so much. And thanks for watching us. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Questionable Conversations Radio with Dr. Glenna Rice. Tune in each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Dr. Glenna explores different parenting methods, examines healthier lifestyles, and explores what else is possible to guide you toward a successful career. For more information or to listen to past shows, visit glennarice.com. That's glennarice.com. See you next time.